that the numbers 1 through 9 that we use today are called the uh, Hindu Arabic numerals. They originated in India and uh, th they were imported into the Arabic tradition and from there to Europe. And here I'm showing now a work which uh, was instrumental in popularizing these numbers in Europe. And uh, you can see the Hindu Arabic numerals written in red here in the bottom line of this excerpt. And they look uh, more or less similar to the way we write these numbers today with a few variations. And above that we have the Roman numerals that were still used in Europe at that time. Which is, uh, you know, V means 5 and, and so on. It's a very different kind of uh, number system, obviously. The, the Hindu Arabic numeral system is a place value system. Like, for example, this work was written in the year 1202, as I have written down here in the corner. And there you can see, obviously, the leading one for example the integer one is in the first position but it indicates its value is not one but one thousand because it's written in that uh, in the fourth position so uh, which is very different from the roman numeral system because there you would use the letter m to denote a thou thousand no matter where you know it's, it's not based on where it's located in the string of uh, integers but rather it is just uh, the letter itself denotes the value, so it's very so, so. Therefore, so the Hindu Arabic numeral system is a place value system, whereas the Roman system is not. This. So, uh, this means uh, that it comes with great advantages for purposes of carrying out advanced computations. If you're going to uh, add, multiply, subtract large numbers that has many integers, many digits, uh, then uh, th it's easier to more systematic to use the Hindu Arabic numeral system than to use the Roman numerals, which is going to be uh, kind of a mess if you go to big numbers. So that was one of the main uh, reasons for bringing these, uh, this shift about in Europe. And uh, you can see that, in fact, the person who introduced it is the person that we see here on this statue and this uh, portrait is, just as the, the pedestal of the statue says, it is the great Fibonacci and perhaps you're familiar with Fibonacci sequence of numbers. In, indeed, it's the same Fibonacci in the very same work that he introduced the Fibonacci sequence. And here we can see it in, in the manuscript. It's written in this uh, column that is boxed here. You can see his own presentation of Fibonacci sequence. I also presented it in uh, modern, uh, e easier to read writing here in, in a separate column. So the, this is the, uh, the famous Fibonacci sequence or every, in every entry is the sum of the two previous ones. So uh, indeed this sequence was introduced to illustrate precisely this point that I just emphasized, namely that calculations with Hindu Arabic numerals are easier than with Roman numerals. So basically Fibonacci writing this work wanted to stress this point, wanted to convey this point to the European audience who was still using Roman numerals and therefore he needed a problem that involves calculation of, of bigger and bigger and bigger bigger numbers so that you can show off how much easier it is to do this in the Hindu Arabic uh, numeral system you can just keep adding without much effort whereas the people who are trying to keep up with you with Roman numerals they're going to be falling behind in this calculation because it's much slower and less efficient and less systematic to, to perform those uh, kinds of arithmetic operations in the in the Roman numeral system. So indeed uh, you see this famous sequence um, the Fibonacci sequence which is now well known in so many different contexts you can find it in nature and this and that and, uh, and a mathematician's delight but it's, it's interesting to know that, that the one reason why it was originally introduced was just as an excuse to have to add a bunch of stuff so that you can show off how, how fast you are at adding, basically. So that is the original motivation for the, uh, the Fibonacci sequence, and it captures the reasons for the introduction of the Hindu Arabic numeral systems in Europe at this time. So in here, I, like I said, the uh, Hindu Arabic numeral systems we inherited, the Europeans inherited it from the Arabic tradition. Here I have an example from a work uh, written in Arabic the uh, al kashi treats on the circumference the circumference of a, a study of the circumference of a, uh, of a circle the value of pi we would say in modern terms so we see here how he has used uh, it the bottom line is his decimal approximation for pi which is accurate to many decimals as you can see i have translated uh, the uh, 
his notation here into uh, into our notation and you can see the underlined part is all accurate decimals of pi so this is the best uh, approximation for pi for uh, uh, hundreds of years and uh, well it's quite interesting to see the uh, the way these numbers are written and how they compare to ours there are many similarities but also a number of differences uh, certainly we see it's particularly interesting to look at the number one and two and three and you can see how they're very similar to the way we write these numbers one obviously it's just a vertical bar that's pretty much the same the way we do it the two you can have a look at it is interesting it's uh, basically a it's a bar like one and then you add a little flip a little extra a little twist to it uh, to which makes sense because two is like one and then a little more so you start with one and you add a little extra that's how these twos are written and then three is one and a little more and a little more again so you see how how the three is like you start with you writing a one and then you it's as if you were writing a two or then you even a little more extra uh, after that that's maybe easier to see here in this uh, picture that I have of a I took this picture when I was in Iran it's a uh, the it's the pin keyboard of a uh, ATM machine so here you again can see these numbers much as they were written in there uh, 600 years ago in that manuscript they are also used still today in uh, this in these cultures and here we have again one is the vertical bar two is the little bar with a little twist on it and three is the vertical bar with two twists so you you see how our modern the or the, the our way of writing two and three are really just 90 degree rotations of the two and three the way they're written here in this keyboard you can see you, t you twist it to the right and you get r2 and r3 however the logic is lost in translation so to speak I mean, we, you can see that the way these numbers were originally written makes a lot more sense you have one two is like one with a little more and three is with one with a little more and a little more again so that has a certain intrinsic logic the way these numbers used to be written but now that we have taken them for one reason or another rotated 90 degrees it no longer has any particular logic the way we write one two three they're just uh, rather arbitrary symbols basically so we have lost that s s uh, as you can imagine when these numbers are travel a long way f uh, from India through the Arab and to uh, to Europe uh, many things become lost in translation and this is just one of the examples of uh, this this phenomenon so s s go back to the source and you can see a lot of the rationale behind it you might say so that was uh, Fibonacci introducing these things inspired by Arabic work as we saw into into Italy Europe there and to it in in this year uh, here we have um, the introduction uh, of these numbers then about 400 years before they came uh, their previous journey then they went from India into the uh, to to the Arabic tradition and that if you know was also accommodated with a similar kind of computational example like the uh, uh, the one with the Fibonacci sequence you know wi which is like an example to show off how quick the auric uh, calculation in fact there was a similar example very much like it also cor corresponding to the second transition the one from India to the Arabic tradition where also there is a very uh, potent image showing how that uh, uh, how these new numbers are useful for calculation and here I have a, a chessboard obviously and you're perhaps familiar with this little uh, a scenario that is quite interesting mathematically which goes like this suppose I place in the first uh, square of the chessboard one grain of rice then in the next square double that amount which means two and in the next square I double the amount so that's four and then the next square double that as 8 and I double 16 now and I double 32 and double double again and so, uh, I keep doubling like this every next square I go I double the amount and look uh, what a pile of rice already and I'm going to have to keep doubling all the way to the end of the of the chessboard here it's going to be an absolutely astronomical amount of rice by the time you get to the to the end 
and in fact this is an example that was used to motivate the use of these new numbers which like we said very much the same kind of philosophy as the Fibonacci sequence is a situation where you have to add and add and add and add uh, massive numbers that quickly grow very very fast uh, to to become very big numbers and that's why you need these new numbers to uh, be able to master these kinds of uh, arithmetical calculations so at that time in the uh, Arabic world uh, people were still using the Abyad system which is basically like a Roman numeral where you have separate letters denoting all kinds of, of values like a thousand and, and hundred and all these kinds of things so it was uh, a transition that was very similar to the one experienced later in Europe in terms of the superiority of the new system uh, having to do with these kinds of calculations so furthermore actually it's very beautiful that this specific example was used to motivate this transition because the numbers are coming from India and in fact the game of chess itself also has Indian origins and rice is a prototypical uh, you know ingredient of the Indian cuisine so it's very beautiful really I, I find this particular example really uh, is a such a beautiful uh, cultural synthesis so to speak bringing together three great uh, Indian contributions to, to the world which is chess and rice and the this numeral system so well thank you